I've got yet another amazing share from one of our no code agents. So big shout out to San Giovanni. He has shared this cursor.new tool. I'm going to go right over to it here. And this tool allows you to do what I was mentioning in a few videos back, which is prompt engineering. So you can create really elaborate prompts and it looks like of course, it's designed for Cursor, it's called Cursor.new. But once you've used Cursor, you've also used Windsurf and you've used Replit and Bolt.new and they're all pretty much the same under the hood. So yes, the interfaces are going to be different, but your prompts can still be used. So it says it's designed for Cursor AI developers and jumpstart your Cursor AI project. I do actually have Cursor installed. I have tried to use it. So there's a project here. I don't know what this project is. I can't remember if I imported it or started it. And I can't actually remember if it's free, if they have a free tier and or if I start typing if it's going to want me to pay for the agent I have no idea it looks very similar to windsurf and they both are forks of vs code so again once you've used one tool you've used them all you talk to it it does the thing npm run dev or pmpm run dev and then you can see it in your browser so very simple but let's just go through cursor.new. So we've got pre-configured prompts for common development tasks, code reviews, and documentation generation optimized for maximum productivity. And then it does the project templates. So a bit, a bit different to the ones that I would create. So ready to use project structures with cursor AI rules. So that would probably be the only different thing, but rules files are pretty much generic, just change the name. So if you were using a cursor rules file in Windsurf, you would just change it to Windsurf rules. It's still gonna have the same uh, kind of layout. And then AI configuration, op optimized cursor AI settings, that will be something different as well. But if you wanna use it for the things that you can share across different projects, so PRD and technical specs, that's going to be the same. It's just a markdown file, code style dot markdown, and then cursor rules. Again, this is just going to change to dot windsurf rules. Uh, you can even do dot rules for different projects and just let the project know that this file has the rules in it. So it's not like they're coded and have to be named a specific thing. It's just that the cursor program recognizes dot cursor rules, windsurf recognizes dot windsurf rules. But again, if a program doesn't have its own rules set up, then you can just create your own rules and tell it what it is. Um, but let's just go through, let's try and use this. So front end, back end, mobile desktop, start new project. Let's go with UK parks directory. And I had a prompt because I tried to use Replit and realized that I had to pay. So there was no free tier. So I just uh, kept this prompt in my dashboard. This was actually a Replit improved prompt so we'll just go with that style playful i think there was more description on the style but we're limited to 500 characters but it's fine this is not a coding tool that we're just working our way through and it's going to help us with the planning so what is it going to be it's going to be a web application this is really cool uh front end i've never used nux.js i wonder if that would be something to try why not? Because we're doing it in Cursor or Windsurf, you can tell it whichever language you want to. You're not limited to what the platform has set. So Lovable does Byte and React. Bolt.new does a few different ones, but you do have to double check what the program is able to code in or what it defaults to. But when you're creating project files like this, you can tell it exactly what you want it to create with. But definitely check because you don't want to create the file and then give it to something like Lovable and you're telling it to build in different languages and you're not really aware that it's just defaulted to what it's used to. Um, so you make sure it's a tool that's completely open. This is why people tend to build or build out the back end in Windsurf or Cursor because you're just so much more free with what you can do. So available packages, let's hit this tooltip here. Okay, nothing happens on the, is it a hover tooltip? Hover, so choose your preferred packages for Nuxt. Tailwind, I've never used Nuxt, I have no idea. Let's go with some image optimization, content management system. That might be, I, I've not checked that out. That might be something 
Nux content. I didn't know. Um, let's see. So what do we want to do now? Prompts for Cursor AI. Use these prompts to help you build your project. So project requirement document, code style guidelines, cursor rules, and progress tracker. Has it? I think it's already just made these for us. So you are an expert project manager tasked with creating a detailed product requirements document for UK Parks Directory project overview. This is what I gave it. It's kind of stopped there project context so it's quite basic documents sections executive summary right a concise overview that includes product visions i don't know if this is ai or if this is just like just pre preset because there's nothing specific to parks monitoring plan this is just getting it to make the document so you can't download this as markdown you would copy it I guess you could just copy it into Windsurf or Cursor and tell it to make the document, which is the point. But once you've copied that, you've got code style guidelines. So you're an expert software architect tasked with creating comprehensive code style guidelines. This isn't really specific to the architecture of the project. So this is all about keeping it on track with clean code and best practices maintainability this is still really cool this is a completely free talk so it's got my same initial prompt and then pretty much just things that are, are for guidance for it to stay on track but yeah what you could do is just give this to chat gpt if you wanted to make sure it was more customized to your actual project but it creates these for you in seconds so give it the basics give it the platform and then it does choose the framework tell it the packages you need, and then it gives you those prompts. So that's cool. I don't actually have to go and use this to build a program because as I said, I would give this to ChatGPT to make it more personalized. So I would tell it, this is the project I want to create, go into more details with the UI and all of that kind of stuff. But cool, free tool, definitely go and check that out. It's just cursor.new and it just gives you an easy and clean way to have documentation for your project and kind of help you stay on track because what I've noticed, especially getting deeper and deeper in Windsurf, is that the bigger your project gets, the more important these files become. When you're just making something very simple, build me this time tracking app, just fun little one page things is fine. But when you're building multi-level things with where users sign in and there's authentication and you're connecting the super base and you've got all kinds of different moving parts you're gonna want to have your documentation your rules you're gonna want to have these things set out to keep the ai on track so worth checking out if you don't have any sort of solution for this sort of thing and of course if you're in the no code agent school community if you head over to classroom and web dev prompt engineering you'll have access to my prompts that i shared uh, where I go into a bit more depth about creating these documents and prompting the AI tool. That's it guys. Hope this video has been useful. If you found it useful, drop a like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.